Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and hey, first of all, happy 2020 to all of you out there. Today's video is a quite special video to kick off 2020 because it's a comparative review of two more blanc pens, the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146 on the one hand side and the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149 on the other hand side. Before we hop straight into things, let me extend two heartful thank yous to penoblo.de in Germany and to La Couronne du Comte in the Netherlands for helping me out right here and assisting to bring this review to you guys. Let's start. The Mont Blanc 149 does come in a massive box, is Mont Blanc's flagship model, as everyone out there probably knows. And the Mont Blanc 146 Le Grand Meisterstück does come in a slightly smaller packaging, or it's not slightly smaller, it's actually substantially smaller. I'll just like uh, leave that with you guys for a second just to see the, uh, the difference in packaging. As you can see right here, this is the packaging of the gold coated fountain pen 149. Comes with an extra fine nib in this case. And then this here is the platinum plated version in there. It's actually not in there because I already took it out. It's uh, uh, sports a fine nib so I can actually show you the differences between the 146 and 149 between platinum coated and gold coated and between an extra fine and a fine nib. Um, other than that other than the size and obviously also the size of the package inside those two packages are pretty much the same and I don't want to spend an awful lot of time on on packaging right here because I want to really oops uh, I really want to focus on the pens. You see, it's this full leather kind of packaging, exactly the same, just a substantial difference in size. Let me get those packagings out of the way real quick. And then we look at the pens. Here they are, these two beauties. This is the 149, Meisterstück 149, 149 Diplomat. And then here we have the Meisterstück 146, 146, Le Grand. This is the gold plated, a uh, yellow gold plated version. There is also a red gold plated version and a uh, platinum plated version. And then for the 146 right here, we have the platinum plated version. The Meisterstück 146 slash 149, as most of you know, obviously is like a cigar shaped pen and both pens, the 146 and 149, uh, sort of do have the same cigar shape just because the 149 is substantially thicker. Uh, the 146 does appear to be slightly more pointy on both ends. Let's appreciate and compare those two pens now for you, top to bottom, capped, uncapped, and we will also compare the nibs and everything just for you. If you're on the fence and you don't know, should you have a 146 or should you have a 149? I hope that that video can then help and guide you to make an informed decision. Let's look at the pens like this. And you can see if we align the clips, then the dome of the 149 is slightly longer and larger. Otherwise, the clips do have the same length, but now the cap bands don't really align right here. So we do seem to have like a different in cap proportions. If we do align the middle cap bands right here, this is the picture that we're going to see. So we actually see a slightly higher dome on the 149 and a clip band and clip that is sitting a little bit lower. So there's like one first difference that we do see right here. The snow cap Mont Blanc logo on top of the pens does have the same size, at least it appears to the eye to be so. The difference seems to be obviously um, that that star does look a little bit smaller because it sits on a, a lot larger dome surface right here. Other than that, 
the clips are the same. Obviously, just that this is the platinum plated version and this is the gold plated version. Both pens uh, have a serial number. Here is the one on the platinum plated version and the one on the gold plated version is actually here on the side. It was just a diffi bit difficult for me to spot right now. It's actually not back here like on the platinum plated version, but it's here on the side. You can see that. Right, then we have the cap center bands. It says Meisterstück Mont Blanc on the 149. And then it does say uh, on the 146, of course, sorry. And then it does say Mont Blanc Meisterstück number 149 picks on the 149. So the 149 states that it is a 149 and the 146 just states that it is a Mont Blanc Meisterstück. Other than that, we have three cap bands, two slimmer ones and one wider one. Let's go down the barrel and we see a cap end band in the plating of your choice yellow gold and platinum right here and then a piston turning knob because it is a piston filled fountain pen let's compare those two side by side capped for a size and let me get a lami safari for size reference sorry that was off camera and here a lami safari Lamy Safari is by no means a small pen, and I think having that picture, it's pretty safe to say that both the Mont Blanc 146 and the Mont Blanc 149 are quite large pens, with the 146 and the 149, at least to my eye, being roughly the same length. This is not like a scientific measurement here. If you want that, please do look up measurements online. Probably the 146 is a millimeter or two shorter, give or take, but I would say that they are about the same. In length, what you see obviously is a quite substantial difference in girth. And I already say that I do find both of them extremely comfortable to write with. Let's uncap them. They are both screw on caps. Let's uncap the 146 first. One. I would say one and a half turns to get the cap off. Let's do the same with the 149. One. One and a half. One and three quarters, more or less, turns to get the cap off. So a quarter of a turn more to get the cap off on the 149. Let's look again at the caps side by side. Yes, that's the picture that we saw before, difference in uh, the proportions and symmetry of the dome right here. Let's get the caps out of the way and look at the nibs. Depending on what kind of uh, accent color of the trims you get, you get a duotone nib in uh, different uh, plating. So here we have like platinum, uh, platinum plating right here and gold uh, um, at the sides of the nib. Here we have like the same picture, just inverted. Then the 146 does have a 14 karat gold nib. As you can see here with AU for gold 585, says Mont Blanc down here, the Mont Blanc logo. 4810 for the hate of Mont Blanc and then beautiful scroll work on here. This is the fine nib that we're looking on uh, at, at the moment. It's inked with uh, Rohrer and Klingner Salix, that little spot that you see on here, a iron gull ink that I successfully used in this pen for quite a while right now and I had no problems with like uh, it being an iron gull ink. Here we have the nib of the 149. This is as said an extra fine nib. The decoration looks pretty similar to the 146 just that the nib is a lot larger. This is also a 18 karat nib as you can see on the AU750 for the gold content and this is look this is what they look like 
in an exact side by side comparison. You do also on the pointy end here see the difference between the extra fine and the fine. The extra fine right here is quite a dagger while whereas the fine is substantially wider and you'll see that in the writing sample. And then the feed, I have not counted the fins but uh, it seems like the 149 does have two or three fins more on the feed. Then both of them are piston fillers. The ink window sits right here. You can't really see that well in the lighting. Yes, you see it on the 149 because the ink level is a bit lower. The 149 here is inked with one of my favorite blue inks. This is uh, Pilot, Iroshizuku, Pilot Iroshizuku Konpeki, excuse me. The 146 does have the exact same ink window, just that the ink level here is a little higher and it's a dark blue ink, so you can't actually really see the ink level. Let's look at them also side by side lengthwise and I'll align them back here at the piston filling knobs and at those uh, piston filling bands. And then we see that they're pretty much the same length. It's just the nib on the 149 that's larger and that accounts for the difference in length. I would say three, four millimeters or so. Let's uncap the Lamy Safari and uh, See what that looks like? Yeah, pretty much the same length than the Mont Blanc 149. So I think it's safe to say that if you're comfortable with the size of a Lamy Safari overall, you'll be comfortable with either one of those. And I think when you actually really pull the trigger on either the 149 or the 146, there's like two things that may be decisive factors for you. One is girth and one is price. Let's look at the section girth here and you do see that the 146 is substantially fatter than the 149. I do find, than the 146, I do find both of them very, very comfortable. This is what the section of Alami Safari looks in comparison. It's a lot closer to the 146. Let me get because this is so expensive pencil, I think it is uh, really good for you to get that picture. And let's let's take that second and get two or three more size reference pens out of the box here. Just to put things in perspective, I'm uncapping those size references right now. So just please give me those 10 seconds. So here we have the 149 and the 146. And a first other size reference of a pen that you may have and you may want to see beside those is the Lamy 2000. So that's what the Lamy 2000 looks like. So I would say the Lamy 2000, of course, pretty much closer to the 149, uh, 146. This is what this looks like. I hope that gives you a sort of an idea. This is a Pelican M600 maybe a bit slimmer than the 146, the 149 still being the fattest here. And then I have an M805 here. The M805 is pretty similar to the 146. Um, so the 149 also being fatter. I don't have my M1000 right here, unfortunately, uh, but don't worry, I'll I plan to do a comparative review between the 149 and the M1000 at some point, and I can already say that the M1000 is pretty close to the 149. Yeah, and the second thing that I said may be a decisive factor, apart from the girth of the pens, is the price, because the 149 being a flagship model is a little more expensive, about 20% or so more expensive than the 146. The 146, depending on which plating uh, it comes with, retails for between 550 to 600 euro here in Eu Europe, roughly, whereas the 149 retails between 750 and 800 euro roughly. So you look at the price difference at of round about 200 euros. Those pens are by no means cheap pens anyway. It's luxury pens, that is obvious. And last but not least now, let's do a quick writing sample with those two pens. I'm just uncapping all the size, or capping all the size references and put them away zoom the camera in a little bit just to give you an idea of how these 
right. That pen here, of course, comes straight up as expected from a fantastic writer such as this. And here we are writing with the Mont Blanc. Meisterstück 146 and we're looking at a fine nib right here. Beautiful pencilish feedback. It's by no means a soft nib. Uh, the contrary is true. It's pretty a pretty stiff nib but I do like that because like you can do really nice and fast writing also the quick cap off makes it a great note taker so that's really a beautiful beautiful writer and I have like filmed an in-depth review of just the 146 so there I talk a little bit more about the writing experience and now we go here with this uh, 18k nib of the Mont Blanc 149 Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149 extra fine nib also a pretty stiff nib which I do like in this case also a pleasant amount of pencilish feedback also very very smooth but I do think that you actually can see that between the fine and the extra fine there is a substantial difference in nib width here on this Rodia paper. Of course, let me zoom back out, there is also a bit of a difference that is coming from this being two different inks, but I do think that um, considering this difference in line width, it's kind of neglectable. And uh, yeah, you see that there's a quite big difference between extra fine and fine. Guys, that was that with this comparative review of the 146 and the 149, those two more Blanc Meisterstücks, fantastic pens. As said, in the future, I plan to film a comparative review of the 149 and the M1000, the Pelican. Once again, let me extend heartfelt thank yous to Penoblo, .de in Germany and La Couronne du Comte in the Netherlands for making this review or comparative overview possible. And I'll catch you guys at the next review. Ciao, ciao.